Hi everyone, it is Chloe here from Scratch Magazine. I hope you're all doing well. I'm super excited to be joining you today with beauty industry icon, George Hammer, the founder of Urban Retreats. And not only that, he's developed the Sanctuary Spa in Covent Garden. He's introduced Aveda to the UK. He's founded Urban Retreat. He is honestly such a beauty industry icon and we're so excited to be talking to him today about the space renting opportunity, Urban Retreat Collective. And we'll also be talking to him about the future of the industry and the way it's going. So we're super excited to get his insight into the industry and speak to him all about the space renting opportunity. I'm just going to, and as always, this will be saved to our Scratch IGTV in our Facebook. So please feel free to watch back at any time and take down George's tips for us. I'm just going to invite George on now. I've just invited you to join George, so if you could please accept in the bottom corner, that'd be amazing, we can get started. So yes, Urban Retreat Collective is a space renting opportunity. Their White House space has been transformed so nail professionals and beauty professionals can rent the space for them to use and work in. So really excited to find out more about the space and why it was launched and why now is the time to start space renting. Just waiting for George to join now. I've just invited you to join George. If you could please accept in the bottom left right corner, that'd be amazing. We're just having some technical issues, just please bear with us. Thank you very much. And here he is now. I've just accepted your invitation, so he should be here any second. Hi, Hi George. Hi, yeah. How are you today? Very good, thanks. Yeah, so this is my very first Instagram Live. So uh, wow. I managed to get Christina to help me while I was on the phone to get in. So it's all a little bit new to me, all this, yeah. Um, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Well, I'm so glad we managed to make it on because Instagram Live is such a new and upcoming thing, but it seems to be such a big thing for beauty professionals these days, doesn't it? Well, it seems to be. I mean, look, you know, when you get to my age, which is a little older than you, I'm not going to say how older than you, you know, you think you know quite a lot, but every day or every week you learn something. And this, this week's lesson is kind of Instagram Live. And um, uh, maybe I'll be doing more of these later on once I... Uh, get the hang of it anyway that's great so I'm you've, always... got, you've mastered it so you you're such a beauty industry icon you've developed the sanctuary spa in Covent garden you've you know found an urban retreat and um, you've got so many you know tales to your bow so which is the way what's what way is the um, industry going and what's changing well the aim the industry's changed enormously right so pre-covid people used to you know want to open a salon let's say i'm a nail technician and i'm a good nail tech and i've got a few friends and you you or you're working in another location you think you know what i want to do my own business you know so what you do is before that you you find a small place open a nail bar or a hairdressing salon or a, you know whatever you want to open a tattoo parlor and you and, and you pay receptionists and you you know get your booking system and off you off you go but COVID changed all that because the problem with COVID and the, the post-COVID era now is that the traditional salon model is, is dead. You know, um, people can't afford now to go and pay rent and pay the huge energy bills that we're getting bills for now and employ staff and with IR35 pay national insurance contributions and pay pension and actually make any money. So... You know, the trend really now and throughout COVID has been that people are working privately for clients. That, that's the, you can't stop the tide coming in, you know. So more and more and more people, whether they're hairdressers, whether they're, you know, makeup artists, nail technicians, find that by going to people's houses, you know, uh, they earn 100% of their income. Um, they can decide when they want to work, when they don't want to work. Um, and, you know, keep all their money um, and 
their clients like it because it's the convenience. But that's a short term scenario. The longer term scenario is to create a model that works. And the model that I believe works is what I call urban retreat collective. And what that is, is that we find, an, we find amazing premises. We've got one already uh, in the pipeline. We've got one in Knightsbridge, but we've got one in the West End of London. And um, it's a hugely popular location. I can't tell you where it is because, you know, uh, I'm not opened it yet, but, and I've got all sorts of legal, you know, confidentiality clauses. But the, the model is for people, for say urban, make a big space. And what we do is we, we give the nail technicians, the hairdressers, the colorists, the beauty therapists, the waxers, everyone 100% of their income, but they just pay me a small rent for their space. It's kind of like the WeWorks model, but for beauty. We're doing it now, we're doing it in Knightsbridge, we will be doing it in the West End, uh, in between Mayfair and Soho, in a very, very famous location. And for example, a nail tech could rent a, a manicure station, you know, and a pedicure station for around, you know, 70 pounds a day, 70 to 100 pounds a day. Now, all they've got to do is two treatments and the rest of the money is theirs. Um, we supply then laundry, we supply reception, we supply a booking system. Every person that works for us in our collective will get their own micro site. So, you know, if you're, let's say, Jane Smith, and you're a, a very, very successful nail tech, but you don't want to go to three different houses every day because you've got to get the, you've got to carry your gear, you've got to go to, you know, Belsize Park, then you've got to go to Hampstead, then you've got to go to Knightsbridge, then you've got to go to Pimlico, and you spend all your time traveling. So the best thing is, is to come with me, we rent, a, rent you a space, you keep all your money and pay me a small rent. And it's win-win for m urban retreat. And, the only thing is, is that we have to make sure for our brand that each of the people that work with us have the skills. And there are obviously, we need them to do a demonstration to show that they've got the skills. And I believe that's forward. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's such a great idea. And the people in the comments are all commenting already. What a great idea. And they seem really excited. I think since the pandemic, especially being self-employed is so much more popular and work, having that flexible basis that they can work on it seems to be really, really the way forward. So I think it's a great model and a great initiative. So obviously you mentioned a bit already, but what sort of nail beauty pro do you think this would be suited best to? Do you think it's ones that are already in London or maybe who want to travel to London to work in? Well, the thing is, I think to be successful, what we do is we help those nail techs or beauty therapists to market themselves. But it's all about teaching them to market themselves. And we've got a strap line, a logo, uh, or a, a, a mission and that is it's a very simple proposition right it says work for yourself but not by yourself because if you're a, if you're a nail tech and you're working by yourself and you, you, you're not part of a community and by working for yourself at urban retreat but not by yourself you've got all those hairdressers recommending clients to you you've got all those beauticians recommending clients to you you've got all the people coming in and out doing all the other treatments being recommended to you as long as you recommend them back now to answer your question the ideal person is someone who's got got a client list you know they're working for themselves but they don't want the hassle of running back and forth that they don't want to have people at their homes because maybe they got child care or God knows, you know, something like that. Um, they don't want to work in a salon because all they do is get pay a lot of tax and all they do in the salon is end up making the salon owner wealthy. But they want to feel that they're part of a community. So the Urban Retreat Collective is exactly that. So if you've got a client base, come and join us. You pay, you know, the, the beauty of our scenario is we're not asking you to sign one year agreements, loads of deposits, spend lots of money you've got your own business and all you need to do is bring your clients um so ideally you would have a client base in london if you don't have a client base then unfortunately you've got to pay rent and build it now the way to build a client base is very simple is that is that you get out there um you meet people you give a few people a free a few free manicures what's that cost nothing just your time uh you say i'm going to give you a free manicure uh, if you don't like it, 
don't come back. If you do like it, I'll give you a special deal on your next one. And then you build your client base. Also, you've got your own micro site on Urban Retreat, or you will have. We launch our new website next week. So people can look at our website and see for Knightsbridge, which is, you know, we're right next door to Harrods and in between Harvey Nichols. Right there, you know, you, you, we're launching our website. You'll see all the, you know, every single micro site has the name of the person, their photograph, um, what they do, a little bit about their experience, a few testimonials. And then when customers come onto our websites and want a manicure, they look at all the photos and say, oh, I like this girl or I like that girl. And, and so, you know, it's not your web, it's our website, but it's our micro site. So you can pr promote yourself properly on there. Um, I think that, that to be safe, you'd need a client base uh, or a little bit of spare cash, which can see you through a few months while you build your client base. But both of our locations, I mean, in Knightsbridge, we're literally in between Harrods and Harvey Nichols, right? In the West End, we are bullseye in the West End. Uh, I can't say exactly where, but we literally are going to be bullseye, which means that if you can't get clients there, you can't get clients anywhere. And for in Knightsbridge, I think we charge £100 a day for a, a manicure pedicure station. And in the West End, it'll be a little cheaper because Knightsbridge is kind of like, you know, it's expensive. The rent's expensive. Um, everything's expensive in Knightsbridge. Um, the other thing you should, you should be aware of is that in our location, uh, it's not just a few stations. When, when you know, we, we have to make sure that it's right for the nail tech or it's always going to be right for the client. Now, what the client gets at Urban Retreat, for example, in Knightsbridge, we have a phenomenal vegan restaurant. It's the best vegan restaurant in London called Holy Carrot. So clients can, you know, have their nails done, have their hair done, have their makeup done, you know, have lunch with their friends at the Holy Carrot. So it's a place to hang out. And we've got all these experts that are basically helping us curate the people. So, you know, for those who know, Angelo Seminara, in my opinion, is the world's best hairdresser. You know, he does every single major fashion catwalk show, works for, you know, every major fashion brand. He's not a salon hairdresser. He's a massively famous editorial hairdresser. Angelo's got millions of people follow him, you know, so he's going to be looking after all our, our hair induction. Then we've got Lan Nguyen Grealis, who is a very famous makeup artist. Lan is going to be curating and bringing in hairdressers. Um, we, we've worked a lot with nail techs over the years. I mean, you know, many, many years ago, uh, we discovered Leighton Denny when he was working behind the chair um, uh, at a salon uh, in, night, in uh, Mayfair called Michael John. And he, we, we put him on the map and made him famous. So, you know, we're no, we're no strangers to, to the nail business. Uh, in fact, my wife is an ex-nail technician um, and used to acrylics, um, um, silks, uh, gels, everything. Uh, unfortunately, when you get married, the last thing I ever get is my nails done. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to Urban Retreat to do that. But my girls at Urban Retreat are phenomenal. You know, um, it's actually one of my favorite departments because as a man, you know, I love to have that, like you sit in the nail throne, you get your nails, your, your, manic, your hands done, you get your feet done. It's my little personal bit of luxury. And I don't know if any of the girls are listening in from Urban Retreat, but they are fabulous. Um, and, you know, it's a, we've got a lovely room. Um, we've got manicure uh, stations, pedicure thrones. Uh, we often do manicures and pedicures at the same station. Um, so in the new model, really, um, the world's your oyster. Uh, and also you can charge whatever you like. So for example, you know, because you are genuinely self-employed, um, you can work the hours you like or the days you like, you can charge the fee you like. So for some people may want to charge 30 pounds for a manicure. Some people might want to charge 20. Some people may want to charge 40. You can charge what you like because you are working for yourself, but not by yourself, you know? Yeah, I think that's so great. It seems like such a cost-effective and flexible way. Um, that people can work in such popular locations and also for such a well, you know, reputable brand like Urban Retreats, so I think, and having the microsite, I think it's great marketing in itself. So that's really good. And it sounds like a really good opportunity. So obviously I know you can't mention much about the new spaces up and coming, but what can you tell us about the current spaces? What's the White House like? What sort of, how many stations are there? What's it, what's it like to the space? The Urban Retreat is, for those of you who know square feet, around 10,000 square feet. Uh, 
we, when we were at Harrods, we had about the same amount of space on the fifth floor of Harrods, but we decided that the urban retreat wanted a home of its own. So we found this beautiful, uh, I would say it's an aristocrat mansion next to Harrods. Um, it used to be the home of the Marchioness Dufferin, and the Queen Mother used to have tea in what is now our Holy Carrot restaurant. So the Queen Mother was a regular, she was a personal friend of the Marchioness. Now the Marchioness died and the building was derelict and the estate came to me and said, look, would you like to take on this building and do something with it? So we thought it would be ideal for an urban retreat. It's on four floors. It's got lots of natural, you know, how many places are in the basement somewhere. You know, everyone always wants to put nails in the basement or something. When you've got a hair salon, or we'll stick a couple of treatment rooms in the basement, or we'll put the nail techs in the basement. We don't like basements because they're gloomy, you know. And you, you know, so um, the White House, uh, which is a white house, it's a big white building uh, on the corner of uh, Sloan Street and Hans Crescent next door to Harrods. Uh, it's on four floors. Uh, the manicure pedicure area is on um, the first floor. Um, lots of natural light. We've got a very famous sculpture of Minnie Mouse on the balcony, a, a big pink Minnie Mouse with gold hands. She's about five foot high, waving to all the people downstairs. And she's right next to the nail tech area. We have uh, pedicure thrones and we have uh, manicure stations. Uh, in the same room, we have um, makeup artist stations. And often, for example, one of our... Um, uh, one of our nail techs, a girl called Chin Mai, she also does brows. So when she's not doing nails, she just whips off, you know, she whips the client over to one of the um, uh, makeup stations and does her eyebrows, for example. Um, and so all our places are full of light. Um, it's, it's, it's homey. You know how many salons are kind of like a big glass shop front and they're kind of like just rows of stations or things like that. When you come to Urban Retreat, Part of the whole thing about it is, is you want to feel like you're at home, you know, and it is actually a very large mansion house. The new location also is full of natural light, um, lots of beautiful rooms. Um, both that, the new location and the existing location are both Victorian buildings, so they've got lots of character. Um, the urban retreat also has some outside space. You can sit on a balcony and uh, have a cup of tea um, uh, while you're waiting for your nails to be done. Um, I suppose... Um, that's really it, but it doesn't feel like a store or salon. It feels more like a home. Oh. we have in the future, it has to have that same kind of homey feel. So you feel like you're part of a family at Urban Retreat rather than working by yourself. Yeah, I really love the fact that, you know, professionals from different parts of the beauty industry really can work together and even sort of refer clients to each other. So I really love the motto, you've got there by work by yourself, you know, for yourself, but not by yourself. I love that. Um, so did you launch the Urban Retreat Collective? Was this an idea pre or post COVID? Well, you know, I wanted to do it for a long time. Um, you know, the thing is, is that in all the businesses that I've had, I always look for the point of difference. Oh, sorry, I've got a concept. I always like to think that this is something that's that's new. So, you know, when we, when we worked with Aveda and brought them over from America, the reason I liked Aveda was that it was the first really true, honest environmental brand. You know, when I worked with Philip Kingsley for hair, you know, we made hairdressing, or he was a trichologist, but we made hair, bad hair actually, sexy by making it, he was the king of healthy hair. You know, I'm in the restaurant business and all my restaurants have a point of difference. We, we don't, we're not the only company that do say, for example, a certain type of food, but we do it differently. So, you know, I'm in the beauty business. This is my main business. And the main beauty business is, is that salon business, I, I felt for many years, it's time for a change. Uh, now, we didn't invent renting a chair. We didn't invent renting a room. But usually renting a chair means that, you know, or a station is that if you're in a beauty salon and that you, you've got a couple of spaces for hair, a hairdressing station, you stick a couple of stations at the back of the salon. Or if you've got, you know, a, a hair salon, there's a basement space and they put a couple of beauty rooms down there. So, and they often rent those out. But that's not a community. That's just you're being a landlord. You know? So I thought that really, 
I looked at the WeWorks model for, um, you know, for, for offices and people now don't want to rent big offices and have lots of overheads. So they rent desk space. And I thought, well, we should do the WeWork type model for beauty. We should be renting spaces to nail techs, renting spaces to hairdressers. But COVID gave me the opportunity actually to think, you know, when, when we were all sitting around, you know, I live in the West End and no one lives in the West End really during COVID. So every Thursday night, we all went out to clap hands for the NHS. But I looked out of my balcony window, there's no one out there clapping, you know. So uh, it gave me time to think. Um, and I thought, you know, now is the time to really have a new model for the, for the hair and beauty industry. So really the Urban Retreat brand has been established for many years, but the Urban Retreat Collective um, was born out of COVID and born out of necessity, really. Um, and we're excited about it. It's brand new. Uh, so, you know, very so shortly, we're going to be full of people wanting to join us. And we're literally launching it now. So the first people that come on board will, you know, what's that word, that expression? Um, the early bird gets the worm. Mm. Or you know you snooze you lose so you know if you're a snoozer you miss out if you don't get out early you don't get the worm so um you know the people who are interested maybe even on this instagram live if you want to be a nail tech and have your own business in knightsbridge then contact us you go to our website uh and you um you apply and we ask you a few questions and you, we show you around um i think that the new location is particularly exciting as well so you know um, the world is is their oyster, really, and then from there on, they can do their own. You know, they, we can work with them. We can help them do their own collective, maybe one day. You know. Oh, absolutely! I think it's such a great opportunity, and I think the fact that you do ask questions, you show them around, and you make sure it's the right fit for them and you. It works both ways. I really like that sort of ethos. So, um, with the way the industry is changing, obviously, it is going more freelance and self-employed, and more on a flexible basis. So, what would be your advice to independents in the industry? Well, you see, if you're an independent, really, you've got to start thinking about how you market yourself. You know, the reason that Urban Retreat is called Urban Retreat, it's a neutral name. You know, whereas most people name a salon after themselves, you know, like your Nikki Clark, you have a salon, your Vidal Sassoon, you have a salon, you know, your Charles Worthington, you have a salon. But we decided not to call our salon a name. You know, we're just a, a person. It's neutral. And, and that gives that those people are a platform so really we are like a theater stuff and you can you can sing on now the nail for those singers what they are all the hairdressers and what what the freelancers have got to do now is they've got to be savvy when in terms of the marketing they've got to say well what's my what makes me special why would someone come to me as a nail as opposed to somebody else is it because i've got great quality is it our pricing's good. Is it because I'm big? Whatever it is, my advice to anyone that's online now listening to this Instagram live is to say, create your USP, your, your unique, called unique selling proposition. Create that and market yourself for that. Because, you know, if you market yourself the same as anybody else, then you're nothing special. So, you know, you have to create a uniqueness about yourself, like you only do a certain type of thing or whatever and market the hell out of it. Make sure that you're on Instagram. I mean, I'm not on Instagram, funny enough. And I mean, I know I'm Instagram live. I don't do social. I don't do Facebook. I don't do this because I don't have the time to engage. But, but people who are artists must find the time to engage. They must create their own community because then that client base, instead of belonging to the salon, belongs to them it's your own business so if i'm george and i'm a nail technician i'm going to find something really special to do some little technique some expert thing that that no one else is doing or doing better than me i'm going to market it i'm going to build my client base i'm going to make sure that i communicate with my clients on a regular basis and tell them to come in uh, i mean the one thing that we will be doing at urban retreat is we're going to be doing um uh you know, evenings every month where we can meet clients. So, you know, I'd be bringing my clients in for a little glass of wine with me or renting a bit of space in this. You know, we, we always have in our urban street locations a space we can rent for a little party or a little launch. So I might be launching a new exclusive 
type of service where you invite the press in. The other thing that people do, and, and, and it's a mistake that many nail technicians have made and hairdressers, is they don't like to give away free treatments to people, you know, because they think it's like demeaning to them. But, you know, you have to give away treatments to, in, to influencers. You have to give treatments away to press. Don't expect to get paid. You have to give treatments away to people who have got friends who they could recommend. Because, you know, it, it costs you nothing to do a free manicure. That gives you time to sell your services for that 15 to 20 to 30 minutes. And then you can do referrals. You can say to your client, look, if you refer a friend and they become a client, I'll give you a free manicure. You know, there's so many ways to market yourselves. But, you know, I always say that a person, if you take two nail technicians, right? One is very creative, does wonderful service, but they've got no interpersonal skills. Right. But they're brilliant nail tech, but they're not they're a bit boring. They don't like to talk to people. They, they, you know, they're not very good interpersonally, not very good at marketing. On the other hand, you've got somebody who's an OK nail tech, but they're very gobby. They talk to their clients. You know, they're friendly with them. They invite them in. They, let me tell you, the most successful out of the two is going to be the one who's got the mo most interpersonal skills. So, you know, if I'm a nail tech wanting to develop my business and my own book, not the salon's book, my client list of my own, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to make sure that every client that comes to me is going to love that trick, is going to enjoy it. They're going to make sure they can't wait till they come back for their next treatment. They're going to recommend their friends because the best form of marketing, trust me, I've been doing it for 50 years, longer than you alive is recommendation there's no better recommendation no better marketing than recommendation and to get recommendations you've got to get people on the chair so you know offer free services um, and 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 do referrals and build your client base that's what i would do if i was a new nail tech looking to start my own business absolutely i think word of mouth is so effective and uh, and customer care is almost equal, it's equally as important as the nail tech's work because people want to have that pamper. They're, ha they're paying for this luxury treatment. They want to feel yeah. cared for as well. So obviously we've spoken about the way the industry is changing, but what do you think is the biggest threat to the beauty industry? Well, I think the biggest threat, there are, there are quite a few. The biggest threat to the industry from a salon perspective, from a salon owner's perspective, is rents, energy, co energy costs and rates. You know, now that's why my model or the new urban retreat collective model is the only model that actually makes sense in, in this market right now. You know, the biggest threat is the high street. You'd think with retailing collapsing because of all the, you know, Amazon online retailers, but it's not. I mean, rents are, are getting more and more expensive, but rents becoming almost as, uh, uh, sorry, business rates are, are becoming almost as bad as rents. So the biggest threat is space cost. So of course, in my model, or the Urban Retreat Collective model, there is no rent, there is no rates, there is no electricity, because we as the landlord pay for it all. All we do is we offer a space that's affordable and not permanent. So people can rent a station three days a week, three mornings a week, two mornings a week, five days a week, uh, to, 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 to suit your own needs. And as you get busier, you can get more and more and more space. So that's why our model really is the only model forward. The threat as well is trying to get staff. You know, if you're a salon owner, you know, it's impossible to find staff because, you know, whether you're in, if you're in the food and beverage business, which I am also, you can't get waiters. You can't get chefs. You can't get runners. If you're in the building business, which I have a, a building subdivision, you can't get plumbers, carpenters. You, if you're in the beauty business, it's hard to get hairdressers, makeup artists, nail techs, because a lot of those people have gone back to Italy, Portugal, Spain, Poland, because, you know, Brexit has created that. Um, and so, you know, the, the th there are two big issues. Issue number one, is space cost. Issue number two is getting staff. But if you are an experienced person, my wife always said to me, if we had a little book, what would he do? And we always said one of the best trades is to be a plumber. You know, because if you're a plumber, you work 
for yourself again. You, you've got your tool bags, you've got your skills. So people who've got skills, like plumbers or like nail techs, I, I'm, I'm actually comparing the two, is that if you have the skills, all you have to do is find somewhere that's economical, you, 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 you become freelance, you make sure that you, your client base and your customer base is your So as long as you're doing great services, that's what you've got to do. So th to overcome the threat, you either go out and work by yourself or you work for someone like somewhere like Urban Retreat, where it's a community and we all work with each other and we all recommend each other and you keep 100% of your income. That's, that's the model going forward and that's the threat. Um, if you're skilled and you're very good at what you do and you have a good interpersonal skill, you cannot fail, honestly, provided you go out and get the business. But don't expect to sit there and have people come to you. You've got to go out and get it. But once you've got it, you've got to keep that business, you know? Oh, absolutely. I think maintaining, you know, retaining your clients is equally as hard as yeah. getting Right. So there's so many nail techs out there and especially with social media you can see all of their work on instagram everything's so much more accessible so i think that's definitely a threat but also a blessing at the same time in this industry is that there are so many clients out there looking for nail techs but um obviously you've you know you spotted late and denny you know the industry inside and out is there any up-and-coming talent we should be looking out for well lots of talent mm. but I'm, I'm always on the scout i mean there are two or three great concepts i'm launching soon um, I can't say what they are because, you know, they'll, I'll get beaten to it. But, you know, I'm always looking for something new and exciting. Um, um, watch this space. Uh, I've got one great new concept coming out probably in a year or so's time around perfume, which surprisingly no one's ever done before. And I've got one other concept uh, around ethnicity, uh, which I think uh, needs to be done. And, and there's a great opportunity. I'm working with very, very talented people. Uh, one on the perfume side and one on the other side. And I'm excited about launching them uh, shortly. And, you know, um, I always think that people always think that it's all been done before. You know, it hasn't all been done before. There's always something new. There's always something refreshing. But you've always got to look out for that point of difference. What makes you special? Why would someone come to you? And why would they keep on coming to you? rather than go somewhere else. And, you know, I often say to myself, if you're average, you're never going to be exceptional. You know, if you, so, so let, let, let's just say, people often talk to me about risk-taking, you know, because business and working by yourself is about taking risks. You know, you work for a, a salary, uh, you know every Friday you're going to get paid, you can pay your rent, and that's it. But, you know, if you're salaried and you work for a company, that company could go into liquidation, and you could lose your job. So it's also a risk. So, you know, the thing is, is that risk is something that is proportionate. So the, they often say the greater the risk, the greater the reward. The fact is, if you don't take risks in life, then you're going to be safe. You know, if you don't want to take any risk, I'll be safe here and be safe there. Who ever heard of a safe person being exceptional? You know, people and can never be exceptional. By, by being safe and being average. And that way, you've got to take risks. Take risks by doing different, unusual things, by taking a chance. No one, no, one, no one should ever be punished for taking a risk, and even failing, because you know, better that than wish you always tried to do something. You know, you were always going to do something. You wish you'd done something, but you always found an excuse not to do it, you know? So... That's my feelings, you know. Yeah, I think that's a really great advice. I think a risk worth taking, even if it doesn't always work out, you've learned from it. And if you've learned from it, then it can't even, it can never be a mistake or a regret, can it really? Well, you know, th that's why we, as in the Urban Retreat Collective model, wanted to minimize the people. You know, if you take a risk to open a salon, you've got to pay a deposit for your rent. You've got to put all the money into the building costs. You've got to find staff. It's a huge risk. If you come to me, all you're going to risk is four weeks worth of rent. So you may want to rent a, a nail station for, for, for two days a week so you can get busy or to your existing customers. All we ask you to do is sign a, a deal for four weeks. 
So, you know, what's your risk? It's two days a week or three days a week for four weeks. Uh, hopefully, not for four weeks, hopefully. That, that's my notice period. So, you know, we don't tie people down to like ridiculous contracts. So we try and eliminate the risk. The, the risk, you know what the biggest risk is for people who go out by themselves is themselves. The risk is I'm not, you're gonna, you can't be lazy. You've got to go out, you've got to spend every minute of every day trying to get those clients because those clients are your assets. Those clients are what's gonna make you rich one day. Every client you get, you know, if you work out to yourself, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get two clients this week. Let's say a client comes to your, your salon every worst way every month, but let's say every two weeks, right? Every two weeks, that means they're gonna visit you 25 times a year, right? And if the average client is gonna pay you 30 pounds or say 20 pounds, right? That client is worth 500 pounds. Mm. That client's worth, remember that. So if you go to the pub one day and you meet somebody and you get that and you do their nails for free, that's going to cost you 20 quid as a free nail, nail polish. But if you get that client, that client is worth 500 pounds a year. I'm telling you, give away 20 pounds, earn yourself 500 a year. It's a no brainer, but you can't be lazy. You can't sit on your bum expecting clients to come to you. You've got to go out and get them and retain them and keep, make sure they go on your nail, mailing list and keep on inviting them to things and hanging out and, you know, talking to them and referring to them. You know, if you're, I mean, I remember there are guys at Harrods, we used to employ hairdressers, one guy called Claudio. He is a good hairdresser, right? A good hairdresser, but not, I hope he's not on this uh, Instagram live, <laughs> not the hairdresser, not exceptional, but he retained every client. He used to kill himself building his clients. You know, he used to earn over 100,000, in some years, I think in the end, 150,000 pounds a year. Now, you know, if you're a nail tech, imagine you work with me at Urban Street. Imagine you're charging 25, 30 quid for a manicure. You know, by the time, if you're fully booked and you work out what that comes to in a year, if you take off the rents I'm going to charge you, you're going to be in you know, significant earning potential. I mean, you're going to be earning 30, 40, 50,000 a year as long as you're fully booked. That's the secret. The secret is build your clients, retain your clients, make your clients love you, understand every single client, keep a little diary on each client about, you know, their husband's name, their kid's name, their anniversary. So that, you know, then you become part of the family and you'll never lose that client. And then, you know, as an independent nail tech, you can really excel and do well. Mm. That's amazing advice. I think, you know, having that those client relationships are so key in this mm. and people love to feel like you know cared for and that's such great advice and honest everyone's really really loving the instagram live everyone's saying love this talk so useful so thank you so much for all the advice and have you enjoyed your first instagram live well i, I have really you know i might do some more of these because you know even at my age you, you're always learning or and that, that's my advice to to your people who are listening on this Instagram live is that, you know, you're never too old to learn. So, you know, even an old git like me, I learned about Instagram live today. I don't think I'll be learning any new nail techniques or late, learning the latest gel nails or whatever else it is. But uh, it's been a pleasure, Chloe. And uh, I hope your listeners, you know, have enjoyed this little talk. And I'm, I'm free and all available whenever you like. Uh, and, and I look forward to hearing from any, for some of these people who join the Urban Retreat Collective. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. People can head to the Urban Retreat website to find out more and apply to join the collective. And it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you, George. Thank just, you so much. Just so it goes live next week. So, so you'll have a better idea then. All right. Thank Great. you. Thank All you so much for your time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.